Hello friends, yes, typical intro, we need to hurry. Alright, there's a big meteor shower that's coming down right now on this asteroid. Um, uh, so we need to actually harvest all this oxalite that's coming down because this is free oxygen. And it's kind of the whole point of this section of the walkthrough is once you get here and get more established, um, you're going to start experiencing meteor showers. And they're going to be dropping in some oxalite that we can just harvest and basically use to keep our duplicates breathing. So I'm just going to put down a few storage bins here. I need my duplicates to uh, get on this very quickly because every second that I waste not picking up this oxalite from outside is just wasted oxygen. So I might as well get it. Who's suffocating? Oh, nice. Perfect timing. Uh, let's see. Catalina. Why is it always Catalina getting into trouble? What do you have down here? Sedimentary rock. Okay. I think here should do it. There we go. Alright, so we need to put together a few bins for us, and these bins are going to be requesting oxalite at a pretty high priority. Um, and I, I'm just going to put it all here for right now. You can spread it out. We're going to make a different room a little bit later just because it can overpressurize your base quite a bit and cause some problems. But for right now, I just want to collect it so that if it does gas off, at least I can use it instead of it just going into space. So, yeah. Let's just collect this at, like, 6 priority. And then every time we do a dig errand to go get this, I'm going to do it at 7 so that they dig it all out as quickly as possible and then they run it all back all at once instead of just doing it one piece at a time, which is really inefficient. So let's try this. Let's see how much they can get. And because that's prioritized so high... Wait, I did prioritize that high, right? Yes, okay. So because that's prioritized so high, my duplicates should run out here and get on top of it pretty quickly. And then as soon as they're done digging everything out, they will run it back here. And you kind of got to balance back and forth um, what you're having them do so they're not just running around and wasting a bunch of time with all the oxalite um, just getting gassed off here. So as soon as they get this part, I'm going to let them go, and then I will do another round here in just a second. By the way, welcome back to the walkthrough of Oxygen Not Included Spaced Out. <laughs> this is part, I think, yeah, 28. Yep. Had to check my notes here. So here they go. Getting all the oxalite back in here is definitely going to be something that we want to do. And yeah, there you go. You can just see this is 2,000 kilograms of oxygen that we just got for free from the sky. And this is going to be one of the quirks of this asteroid. We'll make a setup to eventually deal with this so that it doesn't entomb our solar panels. But for right now, um, we're just going to have our duplicates collect it and then run back. So let's start getting a little bit more here now that they've gotten a bunch of it already. I want to get the stuff that's close to it so that they can actually get it there. Um, I'm not going to worry about this side because I don't think they can get that and get back in here in time. I think some of them are still going to be getting the oxalite. Yep, there we go. So yeah, a little bit of micromanaging that you might have to do here when you first land. This will also stretch your algae out quite a bit because we've only been here for, I don't know, 10 cycles maybe? And our algae is already dwindling quite a bit. And if I don't have to use algae to produce oxygen, I'd rather not. I'd rather just use this for free. But we need a lot more things before we can build a setup out here, at least comfortably, uh, to harvest it automatically. So looks like the showers have stopped, so I'm going to try to get as much in here as I possibly can. In the meantime, uh, just been getting a bunch of Bursa Blossoms up because I want to replace my food as soon as possible. My duplicates are still kind of living out of the Spacefarer module because I haven't been able to get uh, bedrooms and bathrooms and all that kind of stuff set up. And that's because I wanted to get our battery bank improved first. Uh, you might note that I have taken a lot of time to build a lot of solar panels out here, and that's because... You're going to need quite a bit of power when you first get here, but also this is just free power waiting for us. This is why we bought or brought all this glass with us, so we might as well use it. So, yeah, we're getting a lot. Okay, cool. Um, what we're going to want to do when we have all these solar panels, though, is only one battery is not great to uh, do that with. Why is Harold having problems? Are we low on water again here? Yeah, probably. No, wait, what? Harold, I don't know what you're doing. We are low on water, but he should not be doing that. <laughs> All right, we can figure that out later. All right, so anyway, what I've been trying to say this whole time is we need to add a lot of solar panels, and we only really have one battery, and that battery is not going to carry the power through the night enough 
So I'm just going to create another setup like we created in our main base of just a big tall thing of uh, batteries that are going to be on the space module. Whoops, I put it on the wrong thing. Or rather, our rocket modules. So just something like this to create the battery setup. We did the same thing over on this planet too to store all of our excess power. So nothing too uh, out of the ordinary here. The other things that I really want to do are to get to a point where I can delete this face spacefarer module because I won't need it anymore. So I'm just going to quickly add some bedrooms and bathrooms and that kind of stuff. We've got a great hall in this area just to get everything stabilized and then we'll kind of move on with the next things that we want to solve on this asteroid. So give me just a bit to do that. Okay, we got our battery bank done, so we're good with that. The other thing I forgot to mention is the radiation on this satellite is really out of control. Um, so I did kind of wall it off with lead right here so that my duplicates won't be too irradiated when they're kind of over in this area doing stuff. So might want to do that. I also did line the top of my base with a couple layers of lead just to uh, insulate from the radiation that's coming down from the sky. So pretty good. I mean, they're obviously still exposed to a little bit of radiation, but you know, aren't we all? Get rid of these shine bugs. Um, okay, so I also got the barracks done, got the washroom done, and I got the great hall done. Which means that our rocket uh, doesn't really serve a purpose anymore. Um, that's where the great hall was. So since I don't really want it anymore, I can just deconstruct it and all the stuff that was in here should fall out and just land on the ground. So there you go. That was all the stuff that was inside the rocket, plus the materials uh, that it was made out of. So there you go. Um, just going to get this. Actually, I don't really need this to be hooked up anymore. So I don't need the rest of this since I have my own power, which means that all this stuff is just stuff that we can now use in the base. The thing that's annoying, though, is like, for some reason, when you do that, the game doesn't recognize that you've actually done anything with it yet. So like, if I say, hey, plastic, it'll just still say zero kilograms. I do not like that. That really bothers me. Um, one way you can fix it is just restart the game. But another thing you can do is just like sweep it all to one spot. And we need to get our shipping network up anyway. So I'm going to set up a shipping area probably right here. And then we also need like a food storage area here because we're going to have a lot of uh, exposure to different things and our food's going to rot if we don't take care of it. So uh, I'm going to put a food storage area just like we did in the other base. So something pretty much exactly like this. It's just going to be more vertical than horizontal. Uh, and then, yeah, that should get that done, but I need a ventilation system first, so let me get the ventilation system up, and then we'll get our food storage area done, get some hand washing stations, all that fun stuff, so that this can function more like a normal base before we do any more utilitarian things. Alright, we got ourselves a ventilation system, really similar to what we had in the main base. Just going to be collecting our chlorine and carbon dioxide, just so that we can uh, keep them for the couple of purposes that we're going to need. One of them obviously being for any rockets that we want to send back, because not all eight duplicates are going to live here the whole time. But secondly, our food area. Uh, this is just going to need to have chlorine pumped into it pretty regularly. So let's go ahead and set this up really quick. So like usual, uh, we're just going to create a vacuum sealed room over here that's just going to have one tile of water that will barely be blocking this off, but so that my duplicates can still reach through and grab the food that they want. So I've got this hooked up to water, just going to turn it on for a second to get that started. There we go. And then I'm just going to close the rest of this off, and then we can start vacuuming it out. Once we do that, uh, we can start turning on all the other stuff that's supposed to go in here. So we can close these two sides. Now we can turn this on to start vacuuming it out. Be getting rid of it. Oh, we don't have a vent here. I was waiting for them to sweep everything. In the meantime, while we're waiting for that, we can start getting our shipping stuff set up, too. Um, so I'm just going to do the same thing that we did before. A uh, nice little block of vents here, or rather, yeah, conveyor chutes, whatever. Uh, and then just some auto sweepers on either side to help do the sorting. Uh, this is going to be for also the oxalite system that we're going to set up and have all the stuff get shipped in. So I do want a few dedicated points that are separated uh, for s several different things. The other thing we also want to do is start setting up shipping to get uh, food to the places that it needs to go. So for the food that we need cooked, I guess we could... Hmm, how do I want to set this up? I guess we could just do this and uh, have them just move it just a little bit over here, drop it off. Any of the ingredients that get cooked, we want to ship back. So just going to do something like that. 
send it right up there. There we go. And then we need any cooked stuff that we want to have our duplicants eat sent over to the other side. So this is just going to go over here into the chute. Anything else that might rot in there or whatever, just send it back to the main sorting area. And yeah, there you go. Once this all gets vacuumed out, all we need to do is hook this up to our chlorine line, which I did not do, which is really great because that means I'm going to have to redo all this. Well, hmm. Is there a way I could do this? Not really. Okay, well, we're just going to have to redo that. Well, well. Need to get our chlorine line all set up up here. I always forget something with that setup. Let's see, which one's chlorine? This one. All right. So I'm just going to send our chlorine up here so that it can get uh, up there to clean all the germs off of our food that might be there from our duplicates handling it. And there we go. Pretty much set up. Um, I'll just kind of fast forward or when, when this is done, we'll come back to it. We've got other things to talk about here, too. The overall focus that I want on this asteroid is I do want to capture these metal volcanoes eventually, but not necessarily right now. I need cooling and some other stuff up first, so the first thing I'm going to be doing is really like taking over the rest of the sky and getting all of my solar panels up so that I have enough power to push all this. I also may need to set up some coal power in the meantime, which is why we brought some, just to help start cooling some stuff down. So I am going to need some kind of cooling setup, and I might do it like maybe in this area. It's going to need to be pretty big because it's going to need to cool all these different volcanoes that I want to grab. Um, so that's that's going to be our next real focus, is getting some, like, industrial strength cooling going. So uh, I'll continue to vacuum this out. Oh, one other thing that I did is I put the oxygen diffusers on an Atmos sensor. I really only want these to turn on if the pressure is too low, meaning that we don't have enough oxalite that is keeping our duplicants able to breathe in the base. So if it's ever below 800 grams, I just have it going into a filter gate which is just going to be there for, I don't know, 10 seconds, just to make sure that it's, uh, we can assure that it's that low and not like a packet of carbon dioxide floats by or something like that to turn it on. So something like that. And then uh, we'll only be using algae if the oxygen is not sufficient enough from the oxalate that we got. So yeah, I'm just going to flesh out a couple more things. Then we'll build a cooling setup down here. But I need my solar panels. I'll fix up the rest of this to get this food area operational and set up some shipping stuff. But yeah, lots of stuff happening, but all stuff we've fortunately done before. So we'll just kind of jump forward to when we're going to set this up. Okay, almost ready to start building our cooling setup that we're going to use for all these volcanoes. But I uh, did get all of my solar panels up here. So big, long array of them should have a lot of excess power here now. Uh, but there's a bunch of water in the way that I need to get out of here. So I'm just going to use a really similar system to this that I don't think we've really talked about. Um, having a pool of mixed water is not the worst thing ever, but sorting it uh, is something you can definitely do. So if I get any salt water, I'm going to want to send it over into these tanks. If I get any regular water, I'm just going to send it back into my pool that I have right now to feed my blossoms. So pretty straightforward. Um, just kind of a through this really quickly. So we have a couple shutoffs here, depending on which way we want it to go. Uh, actually, all we really need is that if it's, let's see, regular water, we want it to go up. Now, the salt water, we can just have go straight into the tank. So we only really need to do one filter. We don't need to do two. Because that's the only two types of water that are in here. If you had, like, polluted water and brine and stuff like that, you might need to do something different, but... The salt water I'm just going to collect because we're going to use that for our coolant in our cooling system. Only because there's a lot of it. So there we go. Just kind of get some stuff set up for this. What did I just run out of? Oh, it was gold. Okay. I'm just going to get the extra that we don't really want to get sent up here. This is weird. We're going to have to go through all these pipes to get there. So I guess I'm just going to go right up the middle. Just get that dropped off here. This is our drainage for bathrooms. So, hmm. Yeah, this is still not great. Well, I guess we could just do this a little bit smarter. Let's see. This is going up. This is going down. So, disconnect these two. Bridge. There. There. That should work. Okay. Then once we're ready to start pumping this, I will hook it up to power, get all that filtration done. 
I just need to carve a little bit of a space out here. So I hadn't really shown the water sorting stuff before. Um, I'll have it running here in just a second, but I wanted to show that while I'm clearing this area out uh, so we can get rid of our cooling setup all good to go. So be right back in just a sec with that. Okay, as you can see, the sorting has starting started to happen because they finally get far enough over here to get mixed up. So there's the sorting that we have going on, just clearing out the rest of this area. Small little progress update before we get into the big cooling setup, which is kind of going to be the centerpiece of what we're doing in this video. But uh, just exploring more over here under this part of the map, I want to use all this salt water for my cooling setup, so I will get to this. The saltwater geyser comes out at extremely high temperatures, so I'm just going to wall this off for the time being. We will use this later, but for right now, I'm not going to worry about it. We have plenty of natural water to use for our blossoms and for other things, so I'm not too worried. The other thing that we can do right now is we could put up a payload opener. This is not something I've talked about yet, but you could just stick it somewhere around here. I like putting it kind of near the entrance, but there's not... I guess I didn't leave myself a very good amount of room. I don't know, let's just get rid of these three blossoms and we could just plop it here for the time being. But the payload opener is going to be useful to grab any of these interplanetary payloads that are sitting out here that we haven't unpacked yet. So that your duplicants don't need to manually open them. Instead, they can just uh, have them... Oh, I guess we should probably not have any unpacking happening here. Uh, this will make a little bit of a mess, but I don't really care. Uh, so instead of having your duplicants unload these all manually, they can just run it to this payload opener. And then if you hook your payload opener up by uh, rail, you can send everything to your shipping network like you normally would. Thing is, I don't know what the temperature of this is. Yeah, it's probably pretty hot. I don't want to run it through these tiles and hurt these blossoms. So I guess we could just run it up here. Yeah, that should be fine. Cool. And then we're just going to need to connect this to power, and then whenever there's going to be any payloads out here, my duplicants will just grab it, drop it in here, and that'll be a good uh, use of their time, rather than wasting it um, unpacking each of them manually. And also wasting your time, because it's a lot to be like, ugh, okay, now empty that, now empty this. Instead, you could just set that up, and uh, it will do it for you. So, pretty handy way to do it. All right, just going to keep going for a little bit until this is all pumped out. Shouldn't be too much longer, and then we'll build our cooling setup that's going to be for our volcanoes. We're going to take the volcanoes in the next video, but get our cooling setup finished for this one. So we'll get that done. Okay, water's all cleared out. We should be good to go to start getting our cooling setup built. I think I'm going to build it, like, right here. I need to be mindful of leaving space for these volcanoes for our setups for those, so... I think right here is probably going to do it. So yeah, I'm gonna just going to start shaping this out. This top layer, or rather this bottom layer of uh, bristle blossoms really can't be here anymore, so we need to get rid of those. We'll just do our typical destroy every other one and replace it with something else trick that we do to keep our duplicates working as fast as possible. So our cooling setup, we've done something really similar to this already. So something like this. Um, but it's going to be a little bit more involved because we have a lot more things that are going to stem off of it, so... Whoops, wrong place. And now we're waiting for the game. There we go. Wait. What? It's told me I was on a different asteroid and I wasn't. Okay, that was weird. Alright, so, just going to need to get a layer of igneous rock here. Just to serve as the top of it. And I'm going to build this in a little bit of an interesting way. I've never really quite built it like this before, but because I'm going to have so many things that need to stem off of this, um, I'm going to do it a little bit different. And the way that I'm going to do it is you always need to have your steam turbines a level higher than your steam area. Um, and then you will also want coolant somewhere nearby to cool everything off. But I'd rather not have to spend extra you know, pipes and tanks and stuff like that to cool off my steam turbines. So I'm going to build my steam turbines like in the middle here and then my steam area right below. And then the coolant is just going to be like entirely surrounding it. So kind of a interesting strategy. We'll see how well this works. So get rid of the rest of these, by the way. So since we know this is like the middle, I'm just going to try to put a couple of steam turbines here. Well, I guess I kind of want to align it so it's in the middle. So I think if I do this, and then if I still leave a ladder there, we should probably be fine. Right, this is 15 spaces. Yeah, let's try this. 
Just in case I need to get down there and maintain it, I'm going to leave a ladder there. Then I'm going to create this area for my steam. So just something like this. And then surrounding it is going to be all salt water. So something like this. And because this is like a wall of uh, water on the other side of this, I really don't want it to spill. So I'm just going to build it a little bit closer and then I'll build another layer over here. Because this is eventually where it's all going to kind of line up. So this whole area surrounding it is going to be salt water. So just so I have a means of getting down in there, I'm just going to build a ladder that goes all the way down to the bottom. And then I'm going to build one that goes all the way down to the bottom here, but I need to get all this stuff out of the way first. So yeah, that's going to be kind of the idea. Um, inside here, I need to not totally wall this off yet so my duplicates can still work. But uh, inside here is where we're going to be building our aqua tuners. And I think I'm going to build three. I might put a fourth one. Hmm. Let me see how much steel I have. Because we didn't take as much steel as we really wanted in the first place. So let's check it out. Where am I trying to go? I want utilities. Thermo aqua tuner. How many can I build? Let's see. One, two. I think I can build four. So I might as well just build four. And for the other steel needs that we have, I'm going to start shipping it to myself with a different rocket, which we'll do in the next video, but I'll send some more here just to help out the rest of this setup and for the steel that we're going to need for these volcano setups. So, okay. We have all of our salt water already collected in some of these tanks here, and there's a big pool of it over here too that I'm going to start pumping in. It's going to look something like this. Let me start to get the rest of this all closed off. I'm going to leave that a little bit open for the time being. Once that's closed off, I can start building this wall, and that will kind of complete it. So, there we go. Alright, then we will have a big pool of salt water that kind of covers both sides here. So, the sides on these steam turbines actually need to be made out of some kind of metal wall. So, I need to do that. Do I actually really need this? No, probably not. I'm just going to get rid of this ladder. That's kind of awkward. Well, I guess I could just build over it. I don't need to destroy it. Although, those need to be metal tiles, like I just said. So... Let's get that built. Build some metal tiles here, just like that, and like this, so that the salt water on the outside is going to be very cold. That'll keep my steam turbines cold. My steam room is going to be totally surrounded by, like, water and other rooms, which is, I guess, a little weird, but it's also fine. Uh, so no big worries there. I don't know why I'm getting my mission control station. Just marking it that I've seen it before. All right, I'm going to work on this a little bit, um, give my duplicates some time, and I'm going to start filling this up with water. Kind of check back in here just a little bit so we can envision how it's going to be kind of spread out to my other uh, volcanoes when we get to that far. So just a little break. This will probably be the last one in this video before we start actually capturing the volcanoes, but just need to fill stuff up. Okay, here's roughly the vision that I had for this. Um, just typical stuff. We need to get all the gas sucked out of here before we start turning on our aqua tuner. Oh wait, I still need to hook up the pipes for this. What am I doing? Get rid of those. This is ready to start being overpressurized with oxygen, though, um, just to help cool off these steam turbines a little bit more. Now let's start building all the connections between uh, some of these tanks and the actual aqua tuners themselves. So what we typically do here is set up some kind of liquid shutoff, and I just left a little bit of space between these tanks for the ones that are going to connect to the actual aqua tuners. So I think these ones are good enough to... Well, I guess I should do it on the inside. Hmm... Hmm. Yeah, let me do the inside one. So I'll do this one, that one, this one, and this one going into the aqua tuner. I'll get this all kind of piped up here. Let's see. How do we want this to go? I think that'll be fine. So we also need to make sure we always have a space open to evaluate the liquid before it goes through the shutoff, just to make sure that it is warm enough to go through so it doesn't get damaged. So let's see, I guess we could, we could just do something like this. Well, I guess we could just go like that. There, there's one. There's the second one, if we just plug it in like that. Third one. And then the fourth, no, I said I was going to do the inside, not the outside. There we go. So that's the in, like going into the aqua tuner. Get these last tiles of radiant pipe here so that it can exchange more of its temperature before it goes. And once it does, just going to go in here, back out through this. Switch back to Radiant Pipe, which we could probably circle around just a little bit, I guess. 
think these are all going to be going down. So I think all of this is like open real estate, actually. This is a lot better idea than I thought. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of go around like that and then back into the tank. There we go. So that'll kind of help, these, help keep this corner cool. This will help keep the middle cool. This will also help keep the middle cool. And this will help these, this corner stay cool. These ones aren't going to be too great, I guess. Um, I guess I'll try to loop this one kind of back up and around a little. But yeah, I, they're going to be a little bit further away from the super cold water. But we don't need everything to be super cold for this to work. So let's see. That's going to go back this way. This one is just going to come down and connect up into here. Well, do I want to do it that way? No. Let's go about. Let's go this way. Cancel that. Put back to insulated pipe, radiant pipe, and then we can just kind of like... I guess we could circle all the way around here if we really wanted to. I'm also running out of metal, so I need to be a little bit careful about overspending here. I do have lead, so I guess we could use that. So, gonna get this in here. These two are just gonna go to their own aqua tuners, so up in here. And then back down. Switch back to radiant pipe. And I guess, like this. Yeah. Kind of just getting this going on the fly here, so this is why this looks kind of disorganized. But it should work. So I'm just going to come down, hook it in like that. There we go. So that'll basically do it. Um, let me get this filled up a little bit more. I'll start vacuuming this out once we get all this stuff built. Then we'll kind of have an idea of how this is going to operate once we get there. I'm also going to use this salt water and stuff to start filling up tanks and fill up this area to uh, just be all salt water so it can exchange its temperatures with all the stuff around it. So... Yeah, we'll get that in just a sec, and then we'll call it good. Alright, got everything flowing here. Just going to be getting our tanks filled up for our aqua tuners, and you don't really need to fill these up that much. They only need enough to create, like, a full circuit, so I'm probably only going to go to maybe, like, a thousand kilograms for each of these. That one's already pretty much full. Yeah, we could probably stop these. So I'm just going to stop those really quickly from filling up for my other two tanks, and then I can use these tanks to fill up the rest of this if we want to, but... Cool. Now this is set up. Let's get all the other lines disconnected so that we can uh, hook them up to our aqua tuners and get this thing cooling. There we go. Snip those last two. Then we got to hook these back up with our radiant pipe. Uh, that's not where I wanted to go. Cancel that. There we go. Just need to get this connected like this. Then these connected back to where they're supposed to go, like that. Always so hard to remember how everything is hooked up. There we go. Okay, now that we have this going, I'm just going to check to see what the temperature is that we need to allow them to go through our, per our thermosensors. So let's check salt water. The properties. Freeze point is minus 7.5. Aqua tuners lower it by 14 is what it should be. Yeah, so... If this is anywhere above, say, like, I don't know, 8, just to be safe, then I'm going to let it through. Uh, so we can just do that. Copy the settings. Copy the settings, which it didn't do. I don't know why. There. Now we should have all four of our aqua tuners running. We can turn off our pump to pump this out. And there we go. We have a nice big cooling setup. All we really need to do is fill up the rest of this with salt water so that we can exchange the temperatures, and we will have... A uh, bunch of tanks here. Let me get rid of these extra lines here so we can actually get this all set up for realsies. Get this out of here. I probably run these lines back up and feed into this system to fill up the actual, like, pit. But let's see how many tanks we have that we can use for cooling our volcanoes now and other stuff. Should have those two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tanks to run out to different things and basically cool them all kind of centralized in this one place. Um, you don't have to build it this way. You could build cooling on site for each volcano that you need and every other thing that you need, but since I might need to cool this or cool other parts of my base, um, I'm going to need to cool the water that comes out of this salt geyser or salt water geyser. Uh, yeah, I'm starting to really use my power a lot here, so this might be a good time for me to set up those coal generators with all the extra coal that I had because we are burning through it fast, so... I guess we might as well do that really quickly before we call this video good. Uh, I can fit another one if I didn't misclick. There we go. And then just a smart battery, which we don't want to make out of lead because that'll probably overheat. There we go. And then if we have enough power to push all this stuff, we should be good. 
Um, this may go up and down also. We're not in like dire need of electricity here. This is just to kind of speed us up. So yeah, I guess we kind of got all this stuff done. That'll settle that. We're going to need more steel before we start taking these volcanoes, but I think that's going to be it for this video. We will use this setup a lot more, and it'll be fully filled up and running by the time we're ready to start taking these volcanoes in the next video. So yeah, uh, this is what our base is looking like over on the third asteroid, so thank you very much for watching. I'll be back with the next part here really soon.